The cover of the book said Lisa Bloom always gives it to us straight. Her new book is Swagger. More people are jailed in this country than ever before. 93% of them are male. Twice as many boys drop out of school as girls. The statistics go on and on. And Lisa Bloom now joins us. As I said, she is the author of this new book. It is called Swagger. It's a book that looks at why boys in our society are failing in such large numbers. What's the theory? Well, there's a lot going on. One of the big problems is education. Boys are suspended, disciplined, and expelled at four times the rate of girls, even as young as preschool. So many girls, many boys get the message very young, three or four years old. I'm not really welcome in school. I'm not appreciated in school. I don't like school. I don't want to go back. Boys don't read nearly as much as girls do. So girls outperform boys in reading in every grade in every state in this country, 50 so, states. So, well, are you laying the blame on the educational system or the parents? Well, it's not really about blame. What I talk about are the four cultural forces that are hammering boys. Our failing schools, our terrible economy right now where young men in particular have very high unemployment rates, mm -hmm. thug culture, a lot of media messages that encourage boys to be violent, to attack women, to beat up gay men, certainly to be emotionally numb. And the fourth one is mass incarceration where we incarcerate four times as many boys today as we did when I was a girl. Are they four times worse? Certainly not. But we've criminalized a whole class of behavior. So those are the four cultural forces. I'm doing it as quickly as I can. Of, of course. course, there's a whole book about it. Yes. The second half of the book is what parents can do to protect their son, because no parent wants that kind of future for their son. All right, well, I'm going to hold off on the solution until we take a few calls. Maybe they can sort of put a little, shine a little light on what more of the problem is. Whitney in Montana, go right ahead, Whitney. Hi. Um, yeah, I honestly, I'm kind of putting it on the parents here. Um, that puts a lot of pressure on me, <laughs> but I kind of knew what I was getting into when I had kids. Um, yeah. I'm not saying that the media and the school systems, they don't need improvement um, and a change because they do. But in reality, we're the ones that have them from the very beginning uh, as parents or mothers even um, to raise them in a, in a certain light and to put them in the right direction and help them as we can. Whitney, and there's Whitney, a lot of, I want to yeah. interrupt you and ask, are you a mother? Yes, I am. I have three kids. Two kids. And how old are you? Th three kids. I'm 25. You forgot about one? <laughs> no, I said three. <laughs> one There's of the boys, the no doubt. Room. Forgot about the boy, no doubt. <laughs> so how, how, many, how many sons are you raising? I have two boys and one girl. And what, are, how, what ages are they? Uh, my daughter is four. My, son is, my oldest son is almost three, and my youngest is uh, six months. Lisa Aww. and I are smiling knowingly because we have <laughs> young adult and late teen uh, yeah. children, and you're getting into it here. But yeah. it, there's a chance to make things different in that, po yes. in that population. Yes, absolutely. I have a son and a daughter, and I wrote a book last year about girls, so it was only fair that I wrote a book this year about boys. What I found was that our culture gives very different messages to boys and to girls. Mm -hmm. For example, a lot of boys that I interviewed said, reading is for girls. And I thought, where the heck does that message come from? Where, many times it comes from us as parents, uh, because who do our kids see reading at home? Me. Women. Well, generally, the mom reads twice as much but, as dad. But here's where I think it comes from. They are, are hearing it. They're noticing that the girls pick up the reading and read more effectively young. Therefore, they get the message, reading's not for me. Right. And then there isn't anything for them, and there's no educational process to help them kick in later. One of the things so I talk about in the book both, is that boys levels. have to be reading effectively by fourth grade. If they're not, they're going to do poorly in all subjects, and they're highly likely to drop out of high school, be unemployed, and have all of these terrible problems that young men are facing right now. It's absolutely critical that boys read by the fourth grade. In the book, I show parents how to do that. But role modeling that reading is a pleasure, taking out a book after dinner is critically important. That's got to be hard now with so many of the boys that are growing up into adults to be now parents who are been affected by this drought right. of education. Right. They don't know what that is. So you nailed it. It is so important for fathers to be good role models for their sons and not, I'm, you know, that's such a general statement. What does that mean? It means take your son to a cultural event, take him to a book event or a political rally or a bookstore, but show him that you love reading. Literacy is one of the most important things you can give your son. All right. Here's a Facebook comment. Jacqueline says, I think fathers have failed their sons. Single mothers are all too common and they don't have a positive male role model to look up to. So they're not laying the problem at the foot of the single mom. They're saying the dads need to step up more. But again, these dads are products of this system that you're complaining about. They don't 
know any different. They haven't been educated. They may not appreciate these things that you're asking them to teach their well, sons. That's why, look, if you are a father who has abandoned your kid or you don't spend that much time with him, it's never too late to come back into your child's life. That's the good news. And when you come back, children get so many benefits. Their academic achievement soars. Their emotional health soars. It's never too late for dads to come back to engage with their kids. And you know, the Facebook comment is absolutely right. Critically important. Let's go to Carderia. Is that how you pronounce your name there, my dear? Car Carderia? Yes. Um, I'm calling to see, like, how come the minority as far as African-American boy weight dropping, like, constantly being co incarcerated compared to the Caucasian or Hispanic race of young boys? How come they're bursting on and, and the black boys are, like, steadily being incarcerated or dropping out of school? What is the issue between those boundaries? Right, you you bring up a really critical issue, and I noticed you used the word thug life in the beginning. Yes. Was that directed at this issue she's bringing up? I, I couldn't exactly hear. She's the saying, question. why are African American men seemingly um, the ones that are getting the lion's share of this problem, or the disproportionately? represented in the prisons, in the yes. ones that are dropping out, having the difficulties. Yes, Why? I have a whole chapter about that, about the mass incarceration of our boys, and it overwhelmingly we're talking about African American and Latinos, because we've criminalized a whole new class of behavior, and because drug sweeps, for example, overwhelmingly happen in minority neighborhoods. You know, there's a program going on right now in New York City specifically targeted at African American and Latino boys. This is the kind of thing that a generation ago, feminists like me would have been screaming out about. You know, what about women of color? Well, I'm not complaining. Because the statistics are that African American and Latino boys are suffering disproportionately in education, in prisons, and our economy, and they need the extra help, so let's give it to them. I want to remind people who are taking your calls at 1 855 373 7395. That's 855 Dr. Drew 5. Joining us now on the phone is author Crystal McCrary. Crystal, when we talk about thug culture, it's, we're not really talking about something that's specifically aimed at minorities, though, right? Or are we? All right. Well, first of all, congratulations on your book, um, Mrs. You. Bloom. Um, it, it is so needed because our boys are suffering. And you're right. That's the right. point about African-American boys suffering um, in a more disproportionate rate in terms of the incarceration rates. But to your specific question, Dr. Drew, um, regarding are we talking about minorities in this? I mean, listen, in the African-American community, there's always sort of a heightened sensitivity, particularly around our boys in terms of what the perceptions are. But in terms of mm -hmm. thug life, that term that's sort of been used so frequently, um, I can't say that it necessarily refers more to the Latina or African American American community, but what I can say about the life slash sort of this hip hop culture, it is pervasive um, across racial lines. Um, we Absolutely. have more. Hip well, we that's what I, that's what I said, pop. Stephanie. I, I said, what about House of Pain and what about? Yeah, you know, well, let me so, let me talk about that because we have already had some arguments behind the scenes today here at HLN. Here are the statistics of the most popular rap music in the last decade. Two thirds advocates rape gun violence, illegal drug use, or beating up gay men. That's the majority of the most popular rap. Not even just the, the gangster rap subgenre, which is all felony clear, all, all the time. All boys, races are listening to that rap. Yes, they all like yes. it. It's boys not... love this music far more than girls. White boys, black boys, Latino boys, Asian boys, they love this music, and most of them are listening to it with headphones on, so their parents aren't listening to the lyrics. And in the book, I right. show you a lot of these lyrics, which you as a parent are going to be appalled by when you see it. you got to call Absolutely. them on it. You've got to talk about it. That is critically important that parents know the music and speak out for your values. Tell them you don't approve of any of this, you don't like it, and you don't want them to model that behavior. I want to take Stephanie's call in, in Texas real quick. we only got about a minute here. Stephanie, what do you got? Hey, Dr. Drew. Hi, I'm raising a nine-year-old boy, and I want to know what can I help, how can I help him be more successful at school because he seems to struggle. Yeah. Well, that's a huge question. Okay. First of all, of course, you got to know your boy. You got to know exactly what the problem is. Is it a reading problem? Is it a, is it a reading disability that a lot of boys have and they cover it up because of this swagger culture? They don't want to ask for help. So you got to find out exactly what the problem is. One-on-one -on -one tutoring is very, very effective to help boys who have an academic problem. Yes, it can be expensive, but you can probably get a high school kid down the block to do it for five or ten dollars an hour. One-on-one -on -one targeted help is very important. Maybe you or a family member who's good at that subject can help your kid, but 
the most important thing to do is get on it right away before it festers, gets worse, and expands to all other subjects, before your son starts to think, I hate school, and ends up dropping out of high school. You don't want that outcome. There you go, Stephanie. And there you go, Lisa. Thank you very much. Thank appreciate you. Thank you for your kind the, endorsement on the I, front of my book. I gave the endorsement. There it is. I there really it is. appreciate and, that. Uh, this is, I was looking forward to this book. We've been talking about it for quite some time. It is called Swagger. It's, got, it's not just about the problem. It's about solutions.